Bent Layla, who is obviously not Bent Layla. That's an anonymous name. And we were just talking in the background. And so I just decided we just go live and talk about this. We were talking about the difference between the term polygyny and polygamy. So what the difference is, Bent Layla, is that basically polygyny is specific to men, where a man has multiple partners and a woman doesn't. Uh, she's exclusive to that man. Polygamy is universal. Polygamy can be a woman with multiple men, a woman with multiple women. You know, it could be whatever. So polygamy oh. is far more open in its definition. So polygyny is why we use the term polygyny as opposed to polygamy. Okay, that's good to know. I didn't know that. I just thought it was one. Yeah, a lot of people did. I didn't know until like maybe a year and a half ago, two years ago. You know, someone broke it down. Mm -hmm. I was like, oh. You know. But it's not even a widespread definition or known. So, so do you know what it's Layla. called? Sorry, do you know what it's called when women have multiple? The, uh, polyamory, I think it's called. Okay. I think it's called polyamory. Okay. Yeah. Mm, that's gross. <laughs> <laughs> for you, not for them. <laughs> it, it's gross for me. Yeah, I think uh, you, you're. I think you follow me on Twitter and you see my my stance yeah. on guys sharing mm. uh, sharing BJJ. I think that's disgusting. Yeah. I'm not sharing. Uh, yeah, I, I don't. Yeah, I can't share my my girl. <laughs> I don't share private parts. <laughs> that's gross. Do you know what? Uh, yeah, you know what happens there, you know. And then you go in behind that guy, yeah. and there's his lubrication waiting for you. No, thank you. <laughs> that's disgusting. So, bit Layla, <laughs> a weird turn that this conversation took all of a sudden. I <laughs> know. And two Muslims on here talking about weird stuff. So anyway, bit Layla, let's talk about that. So you're Muslim, right? Yes. So are you what I would call a traditional Muslim? Traditional Muslim are people who are born into a family that comes from a country that is traditionally Muslim. So basically, it's like we're talking Arabs, you know, um, some African cultures, like we'd say Somalis. Mm -hmm. uh, is that is that what it is? Or are you a revert like myself? Because I reverted to Islam. I became a Muslim. No, so I'm traditionally Muslim. I'm born and grown up, you know, raised as a Muslim in a Muslim household. Okay. So, I, so I'm Desi, so I'm Muslim. I've grown up in the culture as well we have. Okay. Elements yeah, everybody's always religion. surprised. Yeah, and we have elements of our religion in, within the culture as well, such as dress yeah. sense and um, just the traditional gender roles as well. Yeah. Um, you know, that's interesting because my mother's Desi, and everybody's like always shocked when I tell them oh, my is mom's she? Desi. Yeah, she is. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm Everyone's surprised. like, what? <laughs> really? <laughs> yeah. You're like, okay. <laughs> Yeah, that, that was a big shocker when that came out. It came out, uh, I don't know if you know, you probably don't know, his name is Roald Tomassi and I was on his show and uh, he was talking about that and we were talking about origins and whatnot and I was like, yeah, yeah, my mom is, my mom is Indian. You know, and they were like, what? <laughs> Everybody freaked out. Yeah, I wouldn't have expected that either. Sorry, I think the internet is lagging. You still there? Hello? Hello, yeah, I'm here. It's just the internet's really bad at the moment. Oh. There, there is a storm in the UK, so it's affecting the Wi-Fi connection. Yeah, I don't know what's going on. My internet's bombing on me here, and I don't know why, oh. what just oh, happened. My, mine as well. We, we have a storm in the uk brewing and uh, it's affecting the wi-fi connection as well so okay yeah yeah <clears throat> okay sorry guys internet bombing there um so what are we talking about ah your age range do you mind talking about your age group i mean where, where do you fit in, in terms of age group this is all going to come into a point yeah i'm in my mid-20s 
you're in your mid twenties. Now I'm asking these questions because uh, obviously I was telling guys that you, I don't know, are you directly interested in polygyny or are you just open for it? I'm open for it depending on the man I am, you know, at the moment, mm -hmm. um, you know, assessing to see, you know, if there's anything, uh, you know, if just, if there's a guy that I'm interested in, for example, for marriage, yeah. but he happens, you know, to have other wives, it's, I'm open to it. That's, that's the way that I look at it. Okay. And you said for the right guy, what does that mean? I mean, for, for the man I'm actually interested in and like, and he has the traits and, you know, all the things that I require and desire. Yeah. But he happens to have other wives. I'm not going to let that stop me, you know? Yeah. But I'm not interested in polygamy, just, you know, polygyny, sorry, for just for the sake of it. It really yeah. just depends on the guy. Okay, so I always tell guys, and I tell guys this a lot, I say more women are open to polygyny than they'd actually believe. And this kind of fits into that entire ideology that if, and I always say, if you're that guy, meaning if you're the guy that gives her those tingles, she's going to do it. Would you agree with that statement? Say that again. I said, I, I tell guys all the time that if you're that guy, if you're the guy that gives that woman that in, inner tingle, she'll mm. do polygyny. Like, I, and I tell them this is more widespread than they like to think yeah. that it's not just an exclusive thing to like, you know, mm. a few or a subset of women that it's far more widespread than they think. I said, would you agree to that? Definitely. Like I was actually open to it when I was 19 years old. Okay. Wow. Like I was really young. That's because um, I was a student. I was studying Islamic sciences, you know, sacred sciences. Mm -hmm. um, and at the time, my life was hectic. Um, I knew I couldn't be like a full, you know, like a full on wife and mother because my life would be busy in the schedule that, you know, that I was choosing for myself. So at the time, I thought I would need to be open to it because, um, you know, if because then my husband would have other wives to go to and to be looked after you know I couldn't I wouldn't be able to give my 100% because yeah. I myself I'm busy traveling studying teaching you know all these things because it's mm -hmm. whilst I was studying it was very full on it was very yeah. hectic I didn't have time for friends or family so I knew that okay I need to be open to that so that's why I started I don't know opening my mind to it thinking about it asking questions about it researching it studying you know looking mm -hmm. into it because I thought that might be a good option for me and it's most suitable and convenient and practical for my lifestyle at the time. So that's why I was already open to it at 19. Okay. And it just stuck with you. Into your mid What's that, sorry? I said just the um, entire thing is stuck with you to your mid -20s. It's not that I stuck to it. I had I was already on terms with it and accepted what it was. And I thought I am someone that could fit into that lifestyle. Mm -hmm. um, but it's not something I was particularly looking looking for. Um, I always knew it, you know, th now that my life has changed, I'm not in that, uh, you know, I'm not studying and things like that. Yeah. Um, I have the freedom to choose, you know, I don't have to go for, you know, a man with already wives. Now I'm choosing Obviously. that, depending on the guy, like if I really like him and he has all those traits that I want in a man, and then I would. Okay. Okay, so guys, remember this. I was American and told it to you first. Now you got to confirm. If you're that guy, she's going to go for it. She's, it's not going to stop. So let me ask you this now. <laughs> um, you have girlfriends, obviously. Do they yes. know that this is your stance? I've, talk, I've spoken to some of my close friends. It, it's probably uh -huh. around three or four friends that know this. Yeah. Um, they don't 100% get it. They wouldn't want it for themselves. Um, but the thing is, I, you know, um, in the beginning when I was thinking about it, like when I was uh -huh. 19, I thought, wow, like polygyny sounds really ideal within the, within this 21st century, within the current climate, within, you know, in for so many different reasons, it's a really good ideal, but I would want it for other women, not for myself. <laughs> I would want okay. it for other women because I wouldn't want to share my mind. <laughs> But I can see how it works in theory, you know, it's it's an yeah. ideal, yeah. Um, but I wouldn't want it for myself. But, mm. you know, that changed. So my friends, yes, sometimes they agree with me. They can see 
That's but, what I was going to ask because, like, what's their reaction to that? I mean, it's just like no, you know, I can't, you know, I can't share my husband they, because we've not grown up with those with that model of you know the family we've not grown up with that's not the model of marriage family that we've grown up seeing you know it's yeah. just we've grown up with hollywood bollywood disney these things and it's very you know brainwashed and indoctrinated within us so yeah. naturally you know that's not what you would go for it's just absurd it was not normal that's not the normal you know that's interesting that's you say situations. that yeah mm. Sorry, that's no, for ahead, situations please. like when a woman when a woman is divorced or she's mm. a widow, you know, she has kids to look after. Um, you know, she's really old and she needs to get married now, okay? Then she should. Because mm. there's a reason, you know, there's a re there's a reason. They can't like people can't understand why me as a young girl, like in her twenties, who's never been married before, um, like why I would want that. Like, why would you want that for yourself? Are you not yeah. like degrading yourself in a way because you have the option to choose any man, you know? But yeah. you're choosing one with already wives because that's seen for the women who I don't know, like leftover um, women will call them as they say in China. Yeah, you know? bas yeah, basically that. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> wow. And it's interesting you say that about Bollywood and Hollywood because you know, uh in, in Amongst men, we talk about socialization of like, you know, what's considered mm. to be an idealistic relationship yeah. between a man and a woman. And we say this, you know, this is something that's socialized, you know, and this is something mm. very recent yeah. that's, uh, that's happened. So it's very interesting to hear you say that. So <clears throat> how does your family feel about this? I mean, you know, obviously, my, my I family, would think, yeah, they don't, they don't, <laughs> they don't really know, <laughs> they don't really know, but <laughs> How are you gonna drop this bomb on them? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I've not I've not crossed that bridge yet because it was always dependent on the man, you know. I, I'm not gonna yeah. go to my parents and like, yes, you know, I want a man with already wives. It has to be okay, this is the man I want. Okay, I like him and this is who I want to marry. And also he's married, you know? It has to How come you... from that angle. Okay. I'm not sure yet. I know I'm gonna have to I'll just have to cross that bridge when I get to it. How do you think no. it's going to go over? I mean, when you know you know your family, you it's grew up not, with them, so. Yeah, I know there's there's a lot of obs there's going to be a lot of obstacles. There's going to be a lot of resistance to it because, like I told you, like you know, especially in Desi communities. Yeah, that's what I'm thinking. It's really, you know, it's seen as um, it's taboo. You know, it's controversial. It's not it's not the ideal. Um, usually, men get married to multiple wives and it breaks up families usually it's because you know for other reasons yeah except for the fact that oh i like this woman and i want to marry her you know yeah. like there has to be something wrong with you um so it would be a problem most definitely <laughs> but wow. i don't know like i just okay so like you said, you're going to cross that bridge when you get there. But you don't think it's going to be like a serious major, like, you know, break up family type of problem. I mean, some people actually do this not, type of stuff. I'm not 100% sure, but I... You're risking I know it, huh? I'm going to be a lot of resist. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> but I told you, it depends <laughs> on the guy. <laughs> so if he, he's really got to be that guy. So you're really going to like this guy. Exactly. He's going to risk exactly. family. It's not going to be anybody. Exactly. It's not going to be the skinny armed... No fry cook at mcdonald's no of course no of course not because then he wouldn't have any other wives anyway it'd just be me <laughs> <laughs> so you hear that you guys know? guys stay on your mission don't be the fry cook with skinny arms <laughs> exactly so do the work because dudes. you know you only you'd only ever fight for something you really want in your life you know you yeah. only ever like cross boundaries and things like that for something that you do really want um yeah. And it just comes down to that. Um, hundred percent, I'm gonna, you know, face a lot of like issues and problems and things. But I don't know. Maybe <laughs> I'm gonna be the one to change, <laughs> change those <laughs> things. You know. <laughs> well, I, I, you know, the biggest surprise I find in is that 
when the men of the family resisted. I understand when the women are, uh, resisted. I understand mm -hmm. like, you know, when mothers and aunts and sisters resisted, mm -hmm. but when like fathers and brothers resisted, I find it vexing, like just confusing. Like, dude, you know, you want it. Why would you like, you know what I mean? Well, she made to, a choice. It, well, because fathers will always think, okay, can this man equally support my my daughter can he oh, equally love my daughter can he equally <laughs> love yeah, yeah i know you are but not everyone thinks like you though you know not everyone thinks like that they, they, they sometimes i that. get the idea it's fear yeah exactly like is my daughter going to be looked after well you know how do no, I, know? No, I think it's fear of the wife this is my humble opinion it's like if he really? says hey it's okay for my daughter to do it then oh, then right, moms okay. automatically think oh so you actually want yeah. another wife and this is how it comes out, you know? And then dudes yeah. are just sort of like, no, no, you can't do it. <laughs> yeah. I'm under the, how my daughter throw me under the bus. <laughs> yeah, I didn't think about that one, actually. <clears throat> I, that's what I'm thinking, because for me, you know, I personally, I mean, my daughter, she's, my daughter's at, she's 19, she's asking me to find her husband, but she said she wants to, you know, be in a monogamous relationship. And I'm like, look, I hope you get married, but if your husband wants to get married to another wife, you know, I'm not going to tell him. You know, I'm not going to resist that either. You know, I'm not going to ask them to like put that in a contract. You know, because that's what some sisters do nowadays. They say in the marriage contract, you can't take another wife. Put in the contract. Out. Yeah, I'm like, I'm not going to support that. So you know, but that's me though. Yeah, but Hold it, on, is, we got a it is a lifestyle choice, though, isn't it? Like, it really much is. If you, it very if much you, is. like, for me as a person who I am, you know, I'm very self-aware. I know that I would need that lifestyle because of who I am. Mm -hmm. um, I am I am very mature and you know understanding and you know I'm open I'm open minded I am someone who you know I need a sense of my own space and um, so that kind of lifestyle fits well for me. Okay. No. Wow. Just because of my personality uh, and the way I am. Yeah. Taj. Um, we didn't want to get into details like that, but when she says she's just Desi, is just, just Desi. So we didn't want to get into like exactly like, you know, ethnic specifics. So yeah. it's just Desi. Just take it as it is, bro. <laughs> <laughs> so you talk about this, that, you know, it fits your lifestyle, the way that you want to live, the way that you like to live. But yeah. you're a woman at the end of the day. You're going to be jealous. Yeah, 100%, I, I, of course. <laughs> So how course. do you feel already off that? You know, you're like, you know, I'm quite sure there's. there's I'm actually there's... considering someone right now, and he's married. Okay. I actually am, and he already has two wives. Oh um, wow! You were trying to come on board number three. Okay. Are you serious you know, about um, this? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> what you think? I'm just playing around. <laughs> Mashallah. No, I'm just like, wow, you coming in. Normally, like, you know, they say, like, okay, two and no more. She like coming in us three right off the bat, knowingly. You know, like, okay. Okay. Yeah. Respect. Props, um, girl. Like I already I already am considering someone in that position. Um, and yeah, in your own insecurities and jealousy and all these things are there. Mm -hmm. But um, like that's what I mean when I say it's not for everyone. Mm -hmm. you yourself as a woman you have to understand who you are before you go yeah. into something absolutely I agree. But, yeah but I, I think my internet's copping out again or it's yours to be in that situation um but I mean, just because you feel those things, it's just, I mean, if they did, you know, they go back and have a second kid <laughs> after childbirth, you know, just because of the feelings of the pain, it doesn't mean that's not the reason why you don't do it again. It's it's the fact that those things are there, but you're supposed to overcome them and yeah. um, so sort of go through those things and also who you want to be as a woman, like. I'm someone who I value personal development and, and you know, growing as a person. Mm. Um, and I know that the woman that I want to be as well in the future, situations like this would help me because it would make me a lot more, you know, mature and understanding and forgiving and, you know, all these things. So just because something's difficult doesn't mean you don't do it. It's, yeah. I just see it as the fact that because it's difficult, you do it because of mm -hmm. where you would be after it. 
Okay, so wow. That's my mind. That's how I think. You know, that, you know, this is the position that we always tell men. It's like, you got to take the tough road. There are no shortcuts. If you want to develop as an individual, you got to take the tough road. Hey, let me, so exactly. you mentioned some, something that, that also popped in my head was, um, which you brought up was insecurities. So you as a woman, now I always tell guys, it's a mixed bag that when you're looking at bringing another wife, I call it a team, mm -hmm. you know, cause you're supposed to work yeah. together. When you're looking at bringing another woman on a team, it's important that, you know, uh, you, you are very careful with contact because the woman coming on board might be very attractive or not as attractive. And this could trigger insecurities in everybody. What do you, what do you think of that? Do you, do you think that's a solid plan? I mean, it works for me, but I'm asking you as a woman, what's your perspective on that? Would you want to see your potential or future co-wives? Okay. The line was really fuzzy. <laughs> You're gonna have to uh, okay. Just, yeah. I was having it. Okay. So, I tell guys all the time that this is a mixed bag, like introducing women, you know, prior to marriage. Okay. After marriage, yeah. it doesn't matter. But prior to marriage, you have to be careful because one woman might be significantly more attractive than the other. And this could trigger like extreme oh, okay. insecurities. Yeah. So what do you think of that coming in? Like you come in and you see his wife and his wife is like, you know, peak G Jennifer Lopez. What would that, I mean, how is <laughs> <laughs> at her prime? How would you feel about that as a woman? Would you be, I mean, I would be very when we talk insecurities, would that prevent would, you from actually would, jumping on board the team? It could actually be, yeah. you know, give me cold feet. I would be really insecure. I would, I would feel jealous. I would then come myself and this, and then that would cause me to feel bad about myself, bad about the situation. And then also, mm. like, if you've got that, why, why do you want me? You know, it would it would give me cold feet. Yeah. Okay. It's just, I'm asking this for a specific reason, because I've been telling guys for a long time this type of stuff, that, you know, you have to be really careful with this type of thing, mm -hmm. with introduction of women and wives and all this type of stuff. And so it's it, it, I'd like them to hear it from the female perspective, because, you know, I always talk about how situations make a woman feel. And this is the most important thing. It's like, how does she feel about something? And, you know, and it can blow up in your face, these, you know, pre-marriage introductions, because if the woman coming on the team is more attractive or less attractive, you can crop up a whole slew of emotions that, you know, you're going to have a hard time trying to, uh, you know, put out fires, basically. You know, and, uh, uh, so, guys, if you're going to get married again, get married to her and don't worry about introductions. You save that for later. <laughs> <laughs> That's the lesson. You still there? Oh, she dropped out. Damn. Hold on. I'm going to send her an invitation again. Uh, her internet copped out. She said she's having a hard time with her internet. So, um, well, until she comes back in here, I don't know how the heck you say that. Forca, Brazil. How to maintain masculine frame in a polygynous relationship. I mean, it's the same thing in a monogamous one. Let me see what happened to her while I'm answering this question. So basically, what you do in monogamy is going to be the same thing in polygyny. I'm just going to call you Brazil. You don't, um, you know, if you don't have the masculine frame in uh, monogamy, think that, you know, they're going to rectify the affair of their first relationship by getting another one by causing like competition anxiety in their first wife. And it doesn't work like that. So, um, you know, whatever you, you do in the main, in the monogamous relationship is what you have to do in the polygynous relationship. Uh, okay. She's back. Hold on. Here we go. Uh, there we go. You back. She's having like internet problems over there. Okay, yeah, welcome back. I guess your internet is really, you know, when you do these live streams on Wi Fi, it's like really difficult. So it's usually most of the time we do it over wired and over PC because I used to do it from my phone, but it, you know, it's really jumpy. So, yeah. So, what were we talking about? Insecurities. So, let me ask you this now. Now, are you, can you hear me? 
Well, I think I lost her again. No. Guys, we might have to do this one again, you know. I mean, I might have I might have to have her come back on, you know, when uh, she has a better internet connection. I don't know. Oh, that's unfortunate. Bent Layla. Are you yeah, she copped out. Darn. I wanted to ask her about living under one roof, because you know, I like the idea. Oh, you lost me but too. I don't know what's going on with the internet, guys. That is unfortunate, man. What might have to happen is I might have to reschedule this and have her come back on because apparently I'm having internet problems also. So, I mean, I'm not noticing, you know, my internet problems. You guys are saying you're losing me. Ah, that's too bad. Oh, hold on. She's back again. Let me let her connection get a little bit stable. Then I'll add her to the stream. So, basically, I'm going to ask her questions about living under one roof because you guys know I like to have my women under one roof, so I want to know her stance on this. Let's see. If, let's see if we can get her back in here. Okay. Hi, I'm back. Hi. How are you doing now? Nice. Welcome yeah, back. It's a lot better. Apparently, I dropped out also. The guy, the, the, the guys in the oh, chat okay. are saying I dropped out also. So I guess both of us are having okay. that problem. Maybe it's a Europe thing. So I wanted to ask you. I like okay. to have my wives under one roof. I want. <laughs> I want my women in one house. I want them. You know. Mm. I want to, you know, I want to walk. Let me be explicit. I like to walk around and see girls in, in strip tops and, and boy shorts. And I just like seeing all my girls, like, you know, walking around looking all sexy and stuff. <laughs> obvious. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you for understanding. How do you feel about that as a woman who is okay with polygyny for the right guy? No, I want my own space. You want your own space. What about your own space with the, under one roof? <laughs> no. <laughs> no. No, I couldn't live in one in one place, in one under one roof. See, because what I do, yeah, uh, Todd, she couldn't figure out how to disable it over iPhone. So, because see, I did an entire video series on this. It's actually a Gumroad course that I sold, and I talk about this in there. I'm going to give guys like a little freebie here. Is that basically you need to have a minimum of two rooms separated, you know, uh, for every woman. So she has her actual sleeping area and a place where she can chill, but then there's universal areas like living room and kitchen, mm. you know, but yeah. her herself, she's got her bedroom where she can sleep and a chill room where she can just chill yeah. and do her own thing and preferably in sweet bathrooms okay. in there. I mean, that's my preference. I, I you know, yeah. cause um, from a male perspective, well, yeah. it's very difficult to have multiple houses. You know, especially Why just finding places close together. You, you might find a place a half hour away and say, you know, you got a fire or a rat in the kitchen. Now I got to drive 30 minutes straight, you know, to come play Superman. You know what I mean? And so for yeah. me, just on that also, it's just convenient. <clears throat> Ty says, how many mortgages is a guy supposed to pay? <laughs> that also, there's the cost, you know, because when you look at the cost. Like, yeah. Yeah. You can't get married if you're broke. You know, you can't oh, no. if you're broke in the first okay, place. Okay, fine, fair enough. <laughs> so. that's, 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 that's a good point. Okay, true. Uh, broke have, boys don't have, need you know, to have multiple wives. Yeah, you you have to know you're financially able to in the first but, place. Otherwise, you can't you know, entertain that thought. Well, no, I, I agree with you, but let me disagree with you. <laughs> you okay. can be financially able and have multiple women. Like, like okay, Andrew Tate, he's a, he's a rich millionaire. He, he's a non-Muslim guy. Um, but uh, he's a millionaire and he has his women under one roof. You know, he has a mansion. And, um, you know, I've talked to him and they, they have very, like, uh, close living arrangements. I mean, not even in a way that I would do it. You know, they, they sleep in one bed and all sorts of stuff. And I'm like, wow, dude, I'm like, Ooh, this guy's a boss. You know, that's something I'd never do. Islamically, we're not supposed to do it. But, you know, when you start looking at, like, you know, business costs, you know, and the cost that a man has to incur, you know, even as a millionaire, it's like yeah. he's not doing multiple houses. It's just not, it's not practical from a man's sense. Because, yeah. you know, we view things logically. So it's like, it's just impractical mm. in general. Uh, my wife says, you, we would love it <laughs> here with me. You would love it here with me. Yeah, I guess she's inviting you to come over. <laughs> my wife is a trip, man. Yeah, Miss Abu American. <laughs> Uh, no, I I couldn't I couldn't live um, under roof. 
Okay, fair enough. Even if you was that guy, even if he was that guy, you couldn't do it. Even if he was that guy, possibly. You you no, give up? What well, I see right I there, would, I need possibly. <laughs> no, I'm kidding. Okay. No, that's but you did say possibly, so. It, but you said possibly. That's so not an option that I in there do because I would need to have my own. I need to have my own house. Uh, that's so, just me personally. So you, I. Okay. Are you are you abrogating the possibly? Are you removing that? Sorry, could you repeat that again? The I uh, couldn't hear. I said are, I said I said are you abrogating? You said possibly. I said so. Are you abrogating that? Are you removing that? Are you, are you retracting that uh, that possibly? No, 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 I'm kidding. No, no, that that can't. No, I wouldn't do that. <laughs> okay, so you'd let that guy go if he said one roof. <laughs> because. Because at the end of the day, I need to think about my life and how I will live my lifestyle. Um, will I be happy? Will I, you know, will I feel at peace? Will I feel like I'm comfortable and it's my own safe space? I need to think about all those things. That's Indeed. not, you know, I have to live there for the rest of my life. You know, that's that's mm -hmm. a big, that's it's a big thing to consider that. Okay. Many women yeah, can, no, no. and you know. Yeah. So even if you found like she was a co-wife you get along with and you loved her a lot, you just like no. Okay, could you repeat that again? The, I'm just I'm just going over hypotheticals here and I'm just saying. So even if you met the co-wife and you liked her and you liked her a lot, y'all are real buddy buddy, you just couldn't do it. No. Okay. <laughs> oh, you got a question here. Here's a quick oops, here's a question for you. So oh, Miss Abu American says, "Don't you want to okay. see your husband every day? Make sure he's okay and fine." <laughs> well, I would, of course, but but I don't know. I think I think I'd be happy that I have my own space to myself. You know. I'm, Fair enough. Fair enough. It's just the way I am as a person. It's just. Mm -hmm. It's just your own, like the human being, you know, how you operate and things like that. It's, that's yeah. all it is, really. Okay. So let me, like, let me ask me, you something I, else. I'm... No, go ahead, please finish. Sorry, please go ahead. I'm like, I'm introverted and extroverted. So I, okay. for me as a person, I do need a lot of like space to sort, you know, my energy up again and, you know, interact with people that am as a person that's okay. why I have, even in my own like you know family's home you know the way I am even with my own friends and family I would I need my own space before you know I interact and, and I'm sociable and when I am so sociable I am very extroverted but I do need my alone recluse time it's just who I am as a person yeah yeah I talk about this in the video series that I put on Gumroad actually that you know uh women need their space to like emotionally deprogram y'all are very emotional creatures you know almost everything yeah. operates off the concept exactly. of emotions so. <laughs> and she needs space to just go away and like you know be able to deprogram and get away and like you know emotionally dump all that stuff and just not see people yeah exactly you know? yeah. yeah exactly but that's why i was telling guys it's like don't try and do these like super tiny setups you know unless you've got like women who are very very much okay with that you know I tell guys like she has to have a minimum. Each mm. woman has a minimum of two rooms with it. If you're going to do the the one house thing, I that's the minimum, right. you know. And so you should actually have more, and you should have in suite bathrooms so that you know nobody's like you know doing a shared bathroom thing. But anyway, uh, I got a different question. So you know that guy, when you find him, mm. and you're Desi. Now this is this is this is this is a sensitive area because we talk about this a lot as reverts. It's like, does he have to be a Desi also? Can he be a white guy? Can he be a black guy? Can he be a, 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 a Chinese guy or whatever else? As long as he's Muslim, you know, I'm just throwing out ethnicities. Or does he have to be no, from the I'm community because to... you're open to? No, I'm open to different races as long as, he's, as, long as he is Muslim. Mashallah. And to be honest with you, you don't have that many Desi men like that, though. Like what? That are openly interested in polygyny, that would openly practice it, openly, you know, seek out girls, you know, um, for, I don't know, wife number two, wife 
from a three. You don't have them openly like that. Especially from the community that I come from, I can't speak for all the communities out there. But from yeah. where I've grown up and been raised, and it's like that. So, yeah. um, because like I said, it's like it's more of like a, it's a taboo. You know, it's it's a controversial thing. It's very much like a secret or like a secret wife or things like that. You know. So. Yeah. Yeah, I'm I'm open to different races as long as they are Muslim. Yeah, you know, um, I do I do consultancies, and I noticed that there's like a huge difference in the type of consultancies I do for the Desi community the brothers in the Desi community and for non-Desis and like yeah. most non-Desi brothers, they're having issues in monogamy and the other communities they're looking for and actively like, how do I get into polygyny? But that's a rare question from brothers in the Desi community. They're, it's, they're almost opposed to it. That's why I said it vexes me when the father opposes yeah. it. You know, I find that very like, what? I don't know what it is. Y'all trained it out of your men. So. <laughs> <laughs> what did y'all do to those guys? You just beat it out of them. <laughs> okay. So uh, do you have any men in your family that have practiced polygyny that you know of? I mean, or are you um, just an extreme outlier to where it's like you don't have an example or a frame of reference or, or a reproductive model as an example and you just popped up out of the blue. You're like a wild Pokemon in the family. Is that is that what happened? Sorry, could you say that again? The line was just crackling there. Uh, so, uh, yeah, I was just, I, I went kind of slang on you. I said, do you have a reproductive frame of reference for this, for, 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 you know, I'm okay with polygyny. I said, or are you sort of like, you know, like an extreme outlier in your family? You just sort of, you know, you popped out of nowhere being okay with this. Um, so I didn't catch everything, but what well, are you, are you saying? Like, have I seen it before, or do I have in to your family? To yes. To? Yeah. No. In terms no, of, I don't. Yeah. Wow. I don't. So, do you I fear am the black or my family? Though. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I'm actually the so. Black do you sheep, worry about the idea that because you don't have a? I think you're you're dropping out. You, you back? You there? Say Hello. That again, please. Yeah, you're dropping out. I just noticed it too. So, do. You, not having a reproductive model or example to follow, do you worry about the success of going into such a type of, of a marriage? Do you think like, you know, I might end up like, you know, divorced or something, or it might it might fail? Is that I, something you worry about? I just I just I just think there's um we have an issue with just marriage in general and families. I and that's universe that's the universal thing you can really see into the problems and um just failed marriages but even people who are married like healthy marriages you know mm -hmm. i see that a lot in my family friends and in the world really um <clears throat> and we just i feel like the definition of what a marriage is um family life it really needs to be reevaluated um okay and i see that and i and i see a lot of problems in you know the marriage setups and family setups these days um and i you know i i don't agree with it i don't like it i don't want that for myself um sometimes you have to look at things and i, I don't know you can you can get to what you want by being clear on knowing what you don't want, if that makes sense. Yeah, it does. Okay, so you mentioned something that is very important. You know, when you have one-to-one -one discussions with guys, because you know when brothers get together and we hang out, we talk about these type of topics. And usually, again, like okay. I said, it's the Desi brothers, they kind of oppose polygyny. And then this is a topic they bring up, uh, you know, game playing, divorces, whatever else. And I'm just like, when does this not happen in monogamous situations? You know, I know guys that have never had multiple wives, but they've been married like 14, 15 times. Do you, you see what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. And then I know guys who have had multiple wives and they've only been married like twice. You know, so it's, it's you're right. It's a marriage problem. We have a very, very extreme divorce problem right now in the Oma. And it doesn't seem to be going away. It's actually getting worse. 
you know it's uh so uh, to be mm -hmm. i would agree with you polygyny isn't really an issue in terms of like you know the marriage situation amongst the muslims this is this is not really a, a massive issue in my humble opinion yeah. we have just a, a the hollywood bollywood problem that you yep, mentioned you know, you know that, people that have ideal. these yeah, these crazy ideas of what a marriage should or shouldn't be based off of like a multi-million billion dollar budgeted movie you know those people basing how their marriage is yeah. supposed to be off of that that's wild stuff okay you know i do these things unscripted so i kind of i, I kind of hit a wall on questions there i like got everything out of the way uh we don't have a lot of viewers sundays is always kind of a slow day but if anybody's got some questions drop them uh let it happen but let me ask you something in terms of like this is this is something that generally I advise men not to do. But I'm just going to ask you. But I advise guys to actually set the frame of their relationships and don't like ask your girl many questions. But when you're looking at that guy, what does that guy entail for you? I mean, I'm, I'm going to say this, too. I'm not I, I don't mean it as insult, but I'm going to say take this with a grain of salt, guys who are watching. But what does that entail for you as a woman? What does that guy look like? Oh, connection. So there. Hello. Vince Layla, are you there? Oh, darn. <clears throat> uh, Strive, when she comes back, I'll ask you this question if she comes back. Uh, if not, I'll catch her on WhatsApp. Uh, I don't know. Yeah, it's turned out that she just got a really bad connection. She's over Wi-Fi. It's very difficult to do these like lives over Wi-Fi. So I ended up in here by myself. Ah, here she goes. She's back. Since device is not connected, okay, boom, there we go. Hopefully, this works out. <laughs> okay, uh, I'll go into this one right here. I'll answer this one. Uh, Brazil asked the question How to keep a woman feminine all the time? You got to be masculine, man. You have to be masculine at all times. Um, folk, for, for uh, sorry, Brazil that you asked me before. uh lost connection your question what was the question what was the question that i asked oh that guy the guy that you would do this for what does he look like like in terms of physically money his personality what, what does this guy look like he has everything <laughs> you know <laughs> he's everything huh he's got millions and muscles he's got the he's got the full six huh six figures six foot tall you know no, because <laughs> they're not all six foot tall, though. Okay. So the five foot five guys got a chance? Is that what you're I saying? I've been looking to get my for like past. And I just feel like the okay. quality of men these days to choose from is just. You know? Lacking. Not a lot of options. Yeah. They are lacking so much. And you know, if if I happen to meet that, wow. and you know he is married to other women, then yeah, I am gonna go for it because compared to all the fifty single guys, that one guy I'm all, you know, because he has every he has everything that I want. Ouch, guys! Did you hear what I'm saying? Abu American has been telling you this for a while. Go to the gym, it's fight, get your money right, and be masculine is a mofo. They love it. Listen to her. Y'all negusses is soy, and she's like, there ain't no non-soy, you know, dudes out there. Stop being skinny arm dudes. <laughs> it's not just arms, but generally, you know, I'm just saying, it's a, it's a mentality that goes with the guys that work out. So it's, it, you know, it's, it's wonderful having you on here to confirm everything I've been saying. And uh, would you say your friends feel the same way? Your single friends, would they feel the same way? Are they on the market looking to get married? What is their opinion on the man situation? Um, 
yeah it, a lot of girls in my in the same position I am and it's a stressful situation because you're just like all of this work on myself you know? um but mm. I can't find guys who are doing the same and why would I settle for someone who's not who's not doing the same I, I wouldn't do that. oh I just lost it I, this is the good part too no I'm still here um, okay. can you hear me yeah, yeah I can hear you there's some cracking in it but you're here so it's like um, what was I saying sorry um yeah it's just uh, it's a stressful situation you were saying the search certain that okay is this what like society is producing now in is is this the kind of men <laughs> produce it is. It, they're not that great options to be honest with you and why why would i go for that just for the sake of being married i would rather that you know have i would rather be single honestly it's not okay, the, guys, it's so, not for the sake of just being married it's it's okay yeah. if i'm going to be married there's a certain kind of man that i want in my life wow you know it, it, it's beautiful because i've been saying this for years and you know the 80 20 rule i say is back in action what's the 80 20 rule where 80 percent of the women are chasing 20 percent of the men you know to where it's like and this exactly. is why you find more and more women being open polygyny because there are fewer masculine men and i say we have a soy problem in the ummah with the muslim community i say it all the time it's like guys need to harden the fark up you know it's like you guys are just you're emoting and acting like like you know women with with male genitalia and you need to stop because that's not sexy women don't like that and i tell them all the time it's like muslim women yes they're muslim but they are also women and they want to be attracted they want to be desired they want you know to their man you know, it's not like the rules of women don't apply just because they're Muslim. And I'm like, and this is why, and I'm, I'm speaking for myself now, this is why I have success with getting married to multiple women within the Ummah, because I treat Muslim women like they're women. Yes, they're Muslims, but at the same time, it's a woman, you know, and she knows that, okay, this guy, he's a hundred percent guy with me, you know? And then we put the framework, of course, we do all this within the framework of Islam, but at the end of the day, yo, that's a girl, you know? Oh darn it! <laughs> ah, damn. Yes, there it is, guys. Confirmed. The competition is almost non-existent if you're not a soy. Yes. Thank you, um, man. What kind of name is that, bro? Ad, bro, bruh, ADP. That's what I'm calling you now. I'm just calling you ADP. <laughs> ADP said it right. If you are doing the work, there's almost non there's it's non competition, dudes. I, I literally yeah. I'm 40, I'm 47 years old. I take care of myself. I make sure I'm trying to stay on top of my game, and I've got more sisters lined up to marry me than I can marry as a Muslim. You can only marry four women. I got I got like seven or eight trying to get on the team. Guys, the competition not existing, and these are women who are like 10, 15 years younger than me. Not. Not in my age group of 47. We're talking like from the 20s. If, if like, mm -hmm. sorry, if if you made men great again, girl men with multiple wives, trust me. Yeah. Well, I mean, I've been you trying to help to out. You know, I've been trying to do my part. But you'd be surprised how many sisters hate me. I mean, Muslim Twitter has a hate affair with me. And especially the women. That the guys hate me is a, just a shocker. I don't know why, because I'm not saying anything that wouldn't help them out to get more wives. But the sisters, I can understand. You know, they're like, you know, you know I want a monogamous guy. But, you know. So there was a question earlier. You're in your mid twenties. What's the age range that you're willing to accept? You know, for for a husband, I can't find it. But the guy was asking basically, what would you accept? Um, um, ten years maximum, I think. Ten years maximum. Ten to fifteen years, I think. Actually, 10, 10 to 15. Years. Okay. Yeah. You better be careful. I'm going to swoop you. No. <laughs> I'm joking. <laughs> so uh, there's some couple of questions here. <laughs> uh, no, this one's for me. Okay, thanks, Abu. How can I improve my swag? Look, fork uh, Brazil, go to abuamerican.com. 
and uh, I'll type it in the chat and you can set up a one to one with me. We can set up. I can do a, a video for you. But unfortunately, my time is no longer free. This stuff is, uh, you know, I just don't have time anymore to like give my time away for free. So do 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 you dot um the question. Um I think someone mm -hmm. asked um how do you make women more feminine, I think. Or did you miss that question or yeah. did you see that? No, I answered oh, it. I told him it's like I told him I said basically you have to be more masculine. I was like, you know, there's a balance here and guys yeah, don't exactly. notice this. Exactly. The, the softer you are as a man, the more masculine she yeah. has to be. And the more masculine you are, the more relaxed she can be and be in her feminine frame because she doesn't have to handle business like a man. So you have to take the pressure yeah. of life off of her in general so that she can be feminine. You have to think about, to like, like, oh, sorry, the line's dropping again. Um, it's, you know, if you're at two polar opposites, that's when they would attract best. You know, you'd have yes. to be at two ends exactly. of this, you know, um, um, that's how two pole opposites attract. Um, you can't, ex you, like, um, hundreds of women or yeah, because naturally a woman will be a whole thing from him. Um, yeah. So yeah, she will naturally become feminine. You know, masculine. I agree. I see it. You know, I met this sister. There was a sister. I was traveling, and I was in the city of London, and I met this sister there. She's Algerian, and she considered herself to be like a feminist. And you know, when I really yeah. came at her, like you know, um, with uh, with this like just how I am, I consider myself to be like you know a relatively masculine guy. She totally dropped the entire concept and idea of feminism. She never brought it up with me again. Yeah, it was in her speech. Yeah. You know, you could hear she had feminist ideology, but I was like, why are you talking to feminist stuff? And she dropped it. She just completely dropped it. You know, so um, you know she really did her best, but she was too indoctrinated to actually give it up. You know, she was just too too damaged, unfortunately. <laughs> Yeah, Anonymous Assassin, I agree with you 100%. You know, uh, Anonymous Assassin and I are both Salafi Muslims, and you have to start with the Aqidah and Minhaj Creed and the methodology of how you practice Islam. And then everything else, of course, fits into the framework of Islam after that. You know, you don't find that the Sahaba, the companions of the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, were like soft sway guys. These were guys that would go out and cut people's heads off in the morning and then chill together with their families in the evening. So, you know, they were out actually fighting, you know, and at war with other groups, you know actively you know, so yeah absolutely and they had what did that start with that was all based off the correct akita and menhaj that's why they were fighting they were fighting the polytheists you know uh, of mecca and medina who hated them and wanted them to die for no other reason than being muslim so yeah absolutely i agree with that mm -hmm. um we're having a rough time here do you want to throw anything in here i guess we can call it and maybe we could do this again some other time with a better connection or something if you're up for it you know um but if you got anything you want to say, anybody got questions, drop it. You know, it's like we're coming up on an hour. I thought we were going to be actually shorter than this. Um, and we can try this again if you're up for um, it, you know. Yeah, we can do. Um, it's just um, there is a storm brewing in the UK. Yeah. Um, that's the reason why the internet connection is lagging. It's really bad. Um, but yeah, yeah I'm a business partner here and he's from he's from the UK. And I mean, he, um, he showed me some videos. It's like really bad right now. Oh, like more than anything, I just um, like the entire concept of polygyny and all these things. I just look at it from an educational perspective because I like to learn about, you know, that you you know there has something other than the conventional route, you know. And I like thinking thinking outside the box because it's not the ideal, um, and it's good to be open minded to you know different things to different. My Akida. <laughs> he's asking. He's asking if you're Salafi or not, basically. <laughs> Your creed. <laughs> you want Akida, right? Yeah. No, actually, there's multi multiple. You look at the Ashari, you know, and you look at like Sufia, you look yeah. at Shia. They have different Akidas, you know. They have different creeds, unfortunately. So it shouldn't be different ones, but there are. But, you know, yeah, you know. it's, it's been interesting. Okay. This. It'd be interesting to have some more 
Yeah, I'd like to do this again with a better connection. This has actually turned out better than I thought it would. So it would be really nice to do this with like a clear connection, you know, um, and uh, you know where we could actually like have a consistent hammered out talk. That would be pretty awesome. Let me see what's yeah, this guy say. Hold on. This, I just had a comment pop up. My internet is all over the place. I'm late to the party, but great work. Can you tell me how much a man should be financially good to go for a second wife? Look, too big. Um, this is debatable because uh, if you don't mind me answering this, <clears throat> it's a matter of lifestyle. Uh, you know, generally, what is a woman willing to do in terms of her lifestyle? She comes from a very rich household and you put her in like a one bedroom apartment, you know, with like it's a sofa, a fold out sofa bed. You're going to have a problem. You know, I mean, this is not what she's accustomed to. She may love you and she may want to be with you, but you've completely shifted her lifestyle from one to another. That's like night and day. This is anybody too big. Imagine you're used to driving like, you know, uh, an LS 300, you know, and then someone gives you like a 1982 Volkswagen Beetle. You, okay. You're happy. You got a car, but you're going to be upset. You're going to miss your, your luxury heated seats and all this type of stuff. You're going to be happy you have a car, but you know, it's going to be a problem because that's not what you're accustomed to. So it's also a matter of accustomed to like, you know, lifestyles. Now some women of course can shift, you know, how they feel and how they want to live. You know, some want to just be, what do you call it? Utilitarian. This is very rare. You know, it's more of a male thing, but you know, um, how much money you need. That's very, 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 very subjective, you know, to the individual. You know, I don't like high maintenance women in terms of finances, emotions, they're all going to be high maintenance, but money is, you know, it's kind of like, you know, I don't want to be out like buying Prada and, you know, Gucci and whatever else every other weekend, just so she can like have a good feeling. If she can't self-maintain, you know, a good feeling without going shopping and buying something, then that's not an individual I want in my life in general. You have to have, you have to be self-sufficient in terms of maintaining your mood and your, you know, your emotional condition in general as a man. And she has to have her own version of that without having shopping and lifestyle that has to be all bling and flashy in general, even if you can afford it, you know, it's just, it's just not a way or you want to have a person they're dealing with like untreated type of trauma if they're using shopping as a joy type of thing. So this is very subjective to the individual. I talk about this a lot when I go into vetting and when you're vetting women and you're looking for the right woman for your lifestyle, you have to look at these things very closely because you're going to live with her and you don't want to end up divorced eight, nine, 10, 11 times, you know? So these are, this is very subjective. These are things you have to look at on an individual basis with each one. You want to throw anything there? I'm Layla. <laughs> How to talk to your first wife on board. Um, how to talk to get your first wife on board if you want a second wife. This is a conversation you need to have from the beginning. And you have to make sure you don't have to have a direct conversation. Um, this is something like when I'm dealing with like a woman, I drop several hints about not being a monogamous individual and never being able to be monogamous. She's going to decide whether or not you're that guy and if she's willing to do that lifestyle for you or with you. So um, women aren't stupid. You know, they understand subcommunication better than men do. So just drop that base, a subcommunication like that. I'm not, you know, I'm not a monogamous guy to her. That's like a bludgeon, dude. You're like, you know, you might as well whip out a baseball bat and whack her in the head. That's not subcommunication. That's pretty direct speech. You know, she's going to understand what you're saying with that. So this is something I have early on, you know, in a conversation like, you know, I'm, I'm not really, you know, I can't see being a monogamous type of guy. It's just not really, you know, something I'm used to. I'll, I'll say stuff like that. And I'll let her decide whether she's going to stick around or not. You know, I, I have a non-scarcity mindset in regards to women. You know, uh, if she's gone, she's gone. It would be nice if she stayed, but if she doesn't, there's, you know, there's a bus every 15 minutes. You don't, there's 7 billion people on the planet, half of them are women. You, <laughs> there's going to be another woman coming by sooner than the bus, homie. So, <laughs> you know, you, you got to make it clear, you know, uh, from the beginning without being direct. You don't have to, like, shove it in her face, you know, but. Make it clear that's the life you want to live. You know, that's how I do it. It works for me. Mm, let me see. I don't see any other questions. Uh, I don't see anything else. So, um, Bent Layla, thank you for coming on board. Too bad we had like yeah. these internet problems. And uh, yeah, like I said, it would be nice to have you back on. We can have like a more. Um, stable connection in a, in a more consistent flowing conversation yeah that'd be great to have you back on yeah well thanks for, thank you for inviting me it's been good you have an open discussion 
Yeah, yeah like I said, it's more like a conversation than anything else. So the lesson yeah. of the story, the, the 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 lesson here is, guys, like she said, don't be soy, don't be a skinny skinny arm broke guy. Okay, I, like I've been telling you the whole time, <laughs> right? <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> and be masculine. Bo be out here talking to her like, oh, boo, be boo, like you one of her girlfriends, okay? Be a guy. <laughs> so, all right. Yeah. All right, guys. Uh, thanks for watching, and we'll see you again next Sunday. I'm on with, uh, what's his name? He's a non-Muslim guy. Father's Journey, Tim Beckett. All right, we're out.